All right, hello, and welcome. This is CT5, and is this a tier list of sorts? Why, yes, it's gonna be a tier list for the Caverns of Chaos characters. All right, and as per usual, at the top we've got the S tier, the best ones, and we've got A. In this case, A stands for average. And, you know, that might be apparent as we go along. B is going to stand for bland. It's like average, but just with a negative connotation. And then the bottom, we've got the dwarf tier. <laughs> no, 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 I'm, I'm not that biased. I'm not that biased. It's it's actually the, the castle middernock tier. The three castle middernock tiers are, I think, the worst characters in caverns for their respective uh, class. Not necessarily all of them are this bad, but it's, it's it's not a good look. It's not a good look. In fact, why don't we start with the absolute worst character, in my opinion, in Caverns of Chaos. This dude is real bad. He's got so many bad attacks that sometimes don't even work together, right? He is, notably, is a lot of purging strikes and flaring torches is a non-bow it doesn't really work together um, when you're fighting an enemy with combustible right because then if you go with the flaring torch right that makes sense with the combustible then you can't use the purging strike you get rid of it all you start with the purging strike first then you don't get the combust bonus combustible damage from the burning it's really sad and he just he just doesn't do anything like <sighs> like he has some stabs he's got like one random impaling stab He's got some like polearm slashes and warding lance. It's like, okay, he has a few stats, but he's just so many bad attacks. And then the way he tanks between is through dwarf HP and investigate. So you first want him to get hit, then you want another friend of yours to get hit. So then he can get hit some more, but then you need to use, you might need to use the investigate to chase down an enemy. And, and if you do that, you don't have any good attacks. It's not... He's not good. He's not good. I... Every now and then, a cool thing happens where he, find, where he has all out attack. It's, and it's like, whoa! But it... Oh, man. It does not feel good. It does not feel good. Now, so real quick, most of the characters in Caverns of Chaos are plenty strong. He, he isn't... He, he's he's not good. I there's nothing I can say to defend him. He's he's not good. He's got a nice beard, but that's about it. Uh, so real quick, in in terms of like general general tierings, so S tier really good is generally going to be the top like one or two characters per class. Um, so like per wizard, per priest, per warrior, etc. Um, A tier. In A tier, I am gonna um, things closer to the left are gonna be stronger within the tier, and things to the right are gonna be weaker. Same with B tier. So in A and B, things on the left side are gonna be nice. Things on the right side, a little less nice. But generally, all the characters, like right, majority of the characters are gonna be in this range, and they are all very solid for the most part. You know, we'll talk about some of the caveats and you know situations where they'll shine. Um, if there's another character they partic pair particularly well with, would be a good one. And so actually, seeing this guy, why don't we talk about who he pairs well with? And it's going to be a human priest. Pairing well with this garbage warrior is this priest here, who's somewhere comfortably in A tier. And the main reason why these two pair well together is because this priest has leadership. Dude's got a ton of bad cards, what better way to make use of those bad cards than to trade them for hopefully better cards through leadership. And funnily enough, he generates bet he generates he has Wind Dancer. So he generates unreliable blocks. Which perfect for leadership. That's a strong combo in PvP. It'd be strong here if his deck was good. It's a it's a real problem. It's real strong for this guy. Now okay, back to this priest. Um, very comfortable, A tier, super solid. Um, probably, so the priests are, for the most part, all very good. Um, 
And this priest is one of the weaker ones. I think the main priest that's weaker than her is the Castle Midernach priest, which I will talk about next to stay stay on theme. Leadership is probably is like a standout feature of this priest. She also is the most healing of all the priests, I think. She's got like heals, team heals, soothing darkness, which is sometimes actually really can really save your ass in Caverns of Chaos. Um, it's a few random like powerful bashes. I think she's helped the Wii too. Like, um, very solid. Nothing particularly stand out. I don't think hence again A for average, A for average. Nothing particularly stand out, but very solid. Um, will give you plenty of healing, which hopefully can push you over the edge. Okay, now back into Castle Midernacht tier. We are going to find... Ta-da! Castle Midernacht tier. So he's actually a B tier, but for comedy's sake, down here in Castle Midernacht. So recently there was, there was an update to Caverns of Chaos that made him a bit better, but before then, just too many purges. Way too many. You draw, you just, you draw purges and that's about it from this dude. Um, so I think, I think with the recent update, characters got buffed, he has less purges, he's a bit more real now. You have to, you have to work a little bit harder for him. Um, his main form of healing, he has several daylights in hand, which, depending on who you're paired with, can be terrible. It depends on playstyle too. Um, so sometimes, every now and then you, you sort of like poke around a little bit. Like ideally you focus down characters, but sometimes you sort of hit a character in the way and then um, maybe an enemy has a surprise move. Like a bigger threat enemy has a surprise move and gets closer to you and suddenly you need to start hitting them. When stuff like this happens, you spread your damage around, daylight becomes harder to work around, right? Um, because it's, it's this big AoE heal and cleanse terrain. And if you have wizards on your team that care about terrain, that can be really, really awkward too. And he even gets rid of his own consecrated ground. I think he wants one of, but like, that's a factor you have to consider too. He's just hard to work with, and he he doesn't have that much else. He doesn't have Nimbus either. This is, I think this is the one priest who does not have Nimbus, and that's Nimbus can can potentially save your ass as well. He he just doesn't do enough for for what a priest does. Um, a lot of the cap, the priests in Caverns Chaos are fantastic. At keeping your team alive in some and contributing in some very useful manner um, through a combination of healing, buffs, card draw, right? This dude does. I I don't know what he does. He does. He has he has vengeance, in like a powerful bash. Like he doesn't have a lot of attack. I think he's avenging touch. That's kind of cool. That's some healing. Okay, okay. He's 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 hard to use. He's hard to use. Not a lot of good stuff. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not a fan of this dude. I'm trying to think who he pairs well with, like, like, is there anyone he pairs particularly well with? We know who he doesn't pair well with. Wizards that care about terrain, and there are several of those. Um, I, I, he, ah, oh, man. He doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't do enough. He doesn't do enough. He he is better since since the buffs, but um, on on overall, just not very impressive. All right, next, lastly in the Castle Midernacht tier, the Elf Inquisitor Wizard. And the reason I don't really like her, she her kid feels a little unfocused at times. Okay, so obviously, in Caverns of Chaos, um, in, in any sorry, in any card game, randomness is going to be a thing, and this dialed up a little further than usual in Caverns of Chaos, right? Between the random, your random party, the random map, random enemies, etc., etc. Um, and it's funny that I say she's unfocused because I think for a lot of people, a lot of the characters decks, a lot of the Caverns characters will feel somewhat unfocused. Um, it's just a little bit more awkward with her. She doesn't quite have enough to back it up. Uh, so so every now and then she'll get like a couple punishing bolts or she'll get her silver bolts with face silversmith. Awesome damage. Cool. But after that? After that? What does she have? 
I'm not sure. I'm gonna take a look at the deck list right now. I, I, like, I can't even remember. Gust of War? A pair. She has Acid Spray? So you're getting your elf right up to. Okay, that's it. Okay, Acid Spray? Sometimes useful, right? Like, if you can safely get it off and hit multiple enemies, not bad. Right? The question is, is can you get it off safely? That's the question. Um, and even then, is it worth it too, right? You probably want to hit at least two, preferably three units with that acid spray. Um, so it's like, she doesn't have enough damage to like really carry things on her own. She doesn't support her team super well either. She has, she has some armor hate. Not only acid spray, but like dissolve armor, melt armor. Cool, occasionally some cool damage. She can keep herself alive pretty well. She has teleport self. I think she has a healing dash. Um, and tough and hide strips is randomly nice too, but it's just... It's not enough. It's not enough. All, all the, the other wizards... Um, all the other wizards feel like they do more, and I think you, and I think it'll be apparent as we as we talk about them. <laughs> but okay, so we're done with the castle Middernacht tier. Why don't we talk about one of these other wizards? Let's show off the best one: this Winter Dwarf wizard. She kinda does everything. She's annoyingly tanky, as every dwarf wizard should be. She's done excellent bag of tricks, telekinesis, freeze, huge damage at huge range, rockfall, mighty charge? Wood. Again, crazy bag of tricks, very good defense, good control, um, good damage. She, she just does everything. And really, for for like the really strong characters, that's that's all I can really say. Um, they were just so consistently good. I should clarify, characters towards the top, right? These aren't like guaranteed wins or anything, but it's just um, the stronger the character, it's it's just I think the more the better they'll be able to do in a wide variety of situations to help you manage the randomness of Caverns of Chaos. Um, she's got control, Winds of War, Telekinesis. She's got two reliable males. She's got good damage between Mighty Spark and Freeze. Path of Nines is sometimes hilarious. Frostal is super good. She has a toughness. She has some armor hate. That random rockfall I mentioned, which can just decimate enemies while slowing them down. Muscle through? The, 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 seriously, this, this character has everything and in a good way. Just consistently very high quality of cards, like no matter what. And that's, that's just going to be a feature of like all the S tiers, <laughs> just so consistently awesome. But to talk about a more like standard and mundane wizard, <laughs> we have the Dwarf Spark Wizard, very comfortably in A tier. I say that um, this, this wizard is super, super solid, nice and consistent, not as consistently strong as the S tier. Winter Wizard up here, notably with cards like Powerful Spark, which is like, you know, just okay. But very consistent, very solid, decent mix of damage. Um, right, has some Mighty Sparks, has some Arcing Sparks, which can be really nice. Excellent control. Um, this wizard is fantastic at supporting teammates. In that, a lot of control, a good splash of damage just when you need it. Um, has plenty of armor hate support. Has like surprisingly good defense and movement too. Um, team shift, dash, parry, shifty stab. Um, just a lot of generally good stuff. But then there's some weird, some less impactful cards like there's a random magma spray, reliable hide armor, which is eh, actually sometimes fine. Males, eh, sometimes fine. You know, sometimes you get too many dissolve armors. And that happens, right? But. Um, Overall, just kind of is what a wizard does. We'll soften up enemies from afar, move people around as necessary. Just consist consistently good, super solid, just not as good as the S tier. But still very fine to have. Um, I think this wizard, I think this wizard pairs especially well um, either with like some sort of damage buff to make like the arcing spark better. Um, alternatively, some, okay, some card draw, well that's duh. 
Hard to go wrong with, go wrong with you know good damage too from nice warriors to help um, beat up the enemies that he's stripped the armor of or who's isolated from control. Here's this good stuff. Again, nothing particularly stand out, but very solid. Hmm. Why don't we talk about a warrior? We haven't done one of those in a while. The base dwarf. He's straddling the line between like A minus and B plus, in my opinion. Um. Oh, uh, 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 uh. I'll put him here for now. Here, here's here's the anti dwarf bias kicking in. But I mentioned this because. This dwarf has a high number of bludgeons, just plain bludgeons, which, you know, every point of damage is going to matter at some point in caverns, but it's not particularly, like, I think he's pretty high variance, because while he has a lot of these sort of main attacks, he makes up for it every now and then with pulverizing bludgeons, potent stabs, and team moves. He notably has dash team and walk team, um, which can be really helpful. And Dan's cut for some surprise mobility. So he's like, he's like a, he's a surprisingly mobile dwarf warrior, either personally and for his team as well. The cost of that, between the inconsistency of the quality of attacks, is also that he's actually very squishy. He does not have a lot of good defensive options. Like his armor is, what is his armor? He has like a reliable hide armor. Again, reliable hide, not reliable mail, that's much worse. There's a hit the deck, an unreliable block. Shield block? Okay, that's cool. There's a sprint. Okay, so again, mobile. He's 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 training to be an elf. He's a lot more mobile than most. I mean, if you if you get crusher on him, suddenly he's a lot more exciting. Basically, all his attacks get that extra two damage. Fantastic. But um, yeah, count count on his dwarf HP to help keep you afloat. Um, he he would benefit from from a priest having buffs to make his weaker attacks. That much more punchy would be really really appreciated and potentially heals as well because he's not um he does not have a lot of consistent good defensive options for himself so depending on how you play depending on the situation right like right in inevitably in cameron's chaos people are going to get hit so it's how, how much can you minimize that damage that you're going to take and like spread it around and make good use of it and stuff like that um he might be taking a little bit more than you might expect or want to from a warrior. So that along with the somewhat high high density of, of, of mana attacks puts him in the in the low A, high B range. Okay, B is for bland, essentially average, but just the sort of negative meh connotation. And that's where it kinda is. A fine character, but just has a little few too many meh moments. And I think the last dwarf warrior is going to be the space dwarf warrior, who occupies essentially the same position of high B, low A. They are very, very similar in terms of quality, in terms of like a little bit higher variance than I'd like. I like the space dwarf's attacks better. He has a few random stabs, which are really nice, and notably they're tricky stabs, so they can help you deal with annoying people like the men at arms or other people with potentially annoying blocks, right? So like, um, men at arms, they have a million parries, tricky stab makes that very hard to deal with. The pygmies and their no vital organs suddenly can't block it at all, which is really nice. It's got a couple nice mighty hacks, lunging hacks to move around. What's awkward about this fellow, he has five blocks in his deck. And hopefully, maybe more, maybe less since the change, I actually don't know. I don't I don't fully know how the, the decks have changed since the update. But with five blocks, sometimes you get too many blocks, and he's a dwarf, he doesn't go very far. His steps, his movement is basically relegated to his four lunging hacks, one shuffle, and one warp run. Okay. Um... And speaking of Warp Run, that's sort of the semi... There's a little bit of awkwardness in his kit. Because um, he's Force Field. Two Force Fields, which are potentially awesome. But also has that Warp Run and Arrogant Armor. 
So if you get the stuff at the wrong time, it's, it's kind of awkward. Um, if you happen to get the arrogant armor and warp on with his superstitious, fantastic. Because superstitious is astastic in caverns. Things are dying left and right. It hurts too much. Okay, looking at his deck list, I think I think he's A minus. So they are very similar, very comparable. Um, the space dwarf is a bit more better for like personal like self defense and sort of hunkering down in one spot and absorbing hits as they come, right? He has the five blocks and stuff. Um, the base dwarf down here is meant for being flexible and being able to move your team around and get them to where they need to go. Um, so that's how he's defensive, moving moving his team out of harm's way. Um, this spell is defensive by just getting in the way. And speaking of getting in the way, there's no better person than the human ooze warrior, who occupies a comfortable BB plus area as well. I did not like this ooze dude initially, but he's grown on me quite a bit. Um, again, his job is to get in the way and then be very, very annoying. Um, preferably once he has jumped back in hand, because then if, you know, if people try and hit him, he hops back out of the way and it's cool, he absorbs attacks that way. Um, and then, and then, he'll randomly bash you with, you know, powerful bludgeon and controlled overswing and stuff like that. Um, I think he has some barges to push people around. He's got run team and shuffle team. It, it, it's, it's a weird mix. It's a weird mix. It's going to feel like he doesn't do a lot a good chunk of the time, right? Somebody just draws too much armor, or he gets these jump backs and blocks, and then it's like, what is he actually doing? Um, he doesn't have like too many strong attacks. Oh, he's a decent amount, but um, there, there definitely feels like there's a higher density of these more like utility-ish moves and armors, like Flight Aura and some other stuff. He, just f he, he feels different from other warriors. I think he's gonna be harder to use than most other warriors. Right, like unlike unlike the the Mitternacht warrior who just has a lot of bad stuff, um, this dude is he's just he's harder to use what you get with him, and unfortunately, like part of the downside is that he does actually want to be in the front and does actually actively want to get in the way, and sort of soak hits, sort of, like tempt to soak hits between jump back and like the, the armors, um, so it, it, it's a weird mix. And like, he's actually not very mobile, either. Um, so he has his strong points when, if there's like a spot you need to defend, but... Yeah. I, I can't rate him too highly, because he does feel a little... He feels both more inconsistent than I'd like, and just harder to use than most other people would like, I think. So that's where he goes. He, he, he does do his job well. Um, but he's just not as good as an S-tier warrior. The human stabby warrior. Posting a whopping six impaling stabs, super consistent damage. A lot of her damage is, is penetrating, right? I think her weapon comes from flashing long spear. So you get impaling stabs, perforating strike, puncturing stab. These all ignore armors. There are plenty of enemies that have armor, being able to ignore that, amazing. In, ad in addition, the high density of stabs, because she also has like potent stabs, I think. Um, right? It lets you stab melee units while being safe, which is what you want, right? Avoiding taking damage in caverns, very good. That one extra range might be what you need to chase down a ranged annoying unit. Like, so, so good. Just consistently good stuff. So her sort of defensiveness isn't as good as some other warriors, but just consistently high damage like all the time very consistent and just you're you're almost always gonna have good plays again randomness kicks in and she just draws her met armors that will happen too but more often than not you'll see some nice attacks you'll make things happen you'll make some some nice kebabs or something and while we're talking of s tiers why don't we get an s tier priest in there this human monk does everything so much. I, I think he's one of the best at keeping your team alive, both through the nimbuses he has. I think he's like four nimbuses 
and a super key card that I don't know if any other Caverns character has actually, Violent Spin. Violent Spin is another phenomenal way to keep your team safe and move your enemies, get your enemies into annoying spots, right? Like if he's with a terrain wizard, he can push enemies back onto the terrain, he can get people out with the Violent Spin. And he still has a, a, an excellent set of attacks on top of that, right? I think he's got, I think, he, pretty sure he has like Fiery Stab, Pole Arm Slash, Strong Bash, some Drains as well. Um, decent armor, Crafted Mail when it works, pretty darn good. Random Life Saving Block if things get really, really weird. He even has like Demonic Power as a nice bag of tricks. Like, so many good things. Oh my god, dude has Jump Soldier and Mind Munch as well. That's... that's everything. Wait, does he have Jump Soldier? I thought he had Jump Soldier. He has a Jump Soldier. Jump Soldier, Mind Munch, Defender's Block, Martyr's Blessing. The dude just gets better and better. He's really good. He's really good. <laughs> you see him on your team, you're gonna be happy. He's gonna... He's he'll be able to make something happen. How about... This fellow, where do you think this fellow goes? Oh yeah, that's that should be a fun game for y'all to play at home. I would I would love to hear people's thoughts on this, by the way. Mr. Human Reaper Priest, I think, is very comfortably in A tier. Very comfortably in A tier. Um. Okay. So so th this fellow is actually kind of interesting. Um. Overall, very solid kid. He's got some nemesis. He's got buffs. He's got some mass frenzies. So, on his own, so I, th I think his value gets better the more people on his team that can benefit from Mass Frenzy. Now, admittedly, there's only a couple of those. Oh, there's four. Okay. Pretty good chance of Mass Frenzy. The more people on the team that can benefit from it, fantastic. He's got a nice set of attacks himself. He's got some stabs. Um, he has random horn plates. He has a drain. One or two drains. Martyr's Blessing. Right, if if uh, warriors benefit the most from mass frenzy, warriors have the most HP. Um, so Mars blessing, fantastic with them. Um, a solid amount of healing and movement. Right, I see a dash team. I see healing blessing. I see healing rays. Team shift is all really nice. Some inspiration. Very, very solid character. You'll almost always be able to make something happen with it with this fellow, as well. Um, so yeah, I think like you can play him as kind of like a standard PvP priest, just have him chill in the back. Every now and then you can move him up and poke around with the stabs. But uh... Buff team? Team happy? Go nuts! I think, there, I think there's an argument where he can be very very good in a 1-1-1 one, one, one team as well. He doesn't have that much healing. He doesn't have that much healing, he's a very aggressive priest. The potential danger is that in a team with, you know, this priest and say two warriors, if you sort of go go ham and overextend, just thinking that, hey, you can kill things so efficiently for, from the buffs, and you get ham and you get punished and hit hit hard as a result, um, he can't help you recover that well. So the argument of him excelling in a one-on-one -on -one team is you have is, okay, if only one warrior is in the front, then there's only that one person to take care of which he can do reasonably well. And then the wizard still benefits potentially somewhat from the frenzy, can poke around in the back and you know, soften things up for the warrior to make it easier to kill that way as well. So like, it works out, it works out. Ah, this is fun. Okay, so what's next? And we have the winter priest, who is also very comfortably in A tier. The winter priest, I think is actually pretty good. Her key feature is card draw. She's got several unholy energies. If you can get those early and, and make good use of those, she's gonna be fantastic. She has just enough healing to like balance it out. She has a random potent stab, which is really nice, and some funny stuff like random rocket charge, which is, can be hilarious. She's got some nimbuses, like she has a lot of everything. Perhaps not the most consistent. Perhaps not the most consistent. She functions as a as a pretty standard, like PvP priest as well, right? She sits in the back, 
a little bit more so, just a couple vulnerables, and that's probably where people are like, eh. but you know, in PvP, you're used to playing with sac we're used to playing with sacrificial axe, no big deal, right? Vulnerable on a priest, not a problem. So more so than some of the other priests, just gonna hang back a little bit more, um, help slowly help the team, and then occasionally poke her head out and bonk people. She has a few decent attacks. I, I think she is harder harder to use than other priests, and a little bit more punishing if you if things get wacky. I I do think she's a little bit more impactful on average than the human priest, who again than um the the base human priest here, who has a lot of healing, which is nice, but um, card draw can really fuel a win in potentially a bigger way than heals can. Elf priest number one, the Tesco elf, sits very very comfortably in A plus. It's a fantastic, fantastic priest, in my opinion. So he, this this fellow is very mobile. He's got, I think, multiple elven trickeries. Has a flank move, has a healing dash, one or two of those. Um, so it has a surprising amount of healing, has like one of every single buff out there, more or less. Um, so I think another one who's who's who can be pretty hard to use, um, right? Like like it isn't as like consistent and focused as some of the other characters. So what you see can be, it can be it can feel hard to manage, but he does have. An answer to basically every situation. He even has random entangling roots, which can be incredible. <laughs> um, also surprisingly tanky, because he has a good amount of healing. Surprising amount of healing, and then barbed plate mail, which is a fantastic armor. Has the random nimbus, has some like pushback parries. Um, even has some good attacks, right? I think nimble strike, has ram controlled overswing, has um, avenging touch, just... There's a lot of good stuff. A lot of good stuff. Unholy Wellspring, that's a very, very notable thing there. Only one Unholy Wellspring, but um, there are some characters who would love to have that insane buff. Um, and part of what part of what makes him good, I mentioned how he has like one of every, like almost every single buff and attachment. That includes stuff like a random stone feet, um, where that bit of armor, guaranteed armor, is can be pretty nice and triggers altruism. He's got a lot of ways to trigger altruism as well. Um, so getting the cards up, so potentially getting a bunch of cards um, through altruism, denying cards like a, like a well placed elven trickery can be pretty awesome in caverns. Sort of, because like, okay, then you're potentially taking damage, but he has Nimbus and that armor that I mentioned and some healing. So, you make, you make things work. You make things work. Um, obviously, as an elf, he has less HP, so you'll have to be a bit careful. But this fellow can do a lot. Next up, here's the vampire, who occupies a kind of funny spot because... I think overall he's probably like an A plus ish. And I say that because on his own, so I think I think people overrate this vampire priest. Um, I think the elf vampire is very strong, and again, like very comfortably A plus overall. The elf priest is undoubtedly S tier if. He has another priest to support him, and ideally, it's either the the human monk priest or the human reaper priest. He wants either a damage buff and or martyr's blessing. With those, then this elf vampire is absolutely bonkers. On his own, you're gonna have to play a little bit more conservatively. He might not always have the damage you need, like if the enemy has armor and whatever else. But he doesn't have that much, he's not very mobile. Without the buffs, he's not very mobile, doesn't always have enough damage. So you have to play more conservatively um, on his own. But because of all the drains, if you can make it work, he can. He ends up being very tanky in that regard. Um, has a, Does have a tremendous amount of healing if the drains work. Has some bonus healing through talented healer and help the weak and whatnot. And he has a very random bless. 
So still undoubtedly very good. Um, but for this elf vampire to be at his best, he needs another priest. And if you do don't, you treat him more like a warrior than a priest. He will have some nice buffs for your teammates, but you do have to be careful. And again, the loners, he still has those two random loners. And if you're not careful, that can get him blown up as well. You gotta be careful. And then, you know, again, other times, he has the bless, he has the cushing armor, and you're up against big enemies who have big attacks, and he just laughs at them. So, as always, some variants, but. And a very strong character. But needs, needs another priest to be at his best, and otherwise, is just. Treat him as like an, an extra tanky warrior. I think, if he's on his own. And the very last priest, you all saw it coming, the Ooze Priest, who I think is deserving of S tier. Might be a little bit biased here, potentially. Um, so I, I talked about how much I love in my Caverns runs, and for good reason. Eames, incredible amounts of healing and card draw altogether. It's nuts. Um, and he got sort of buffed. Probably overall a buff as well. Um, I, 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 I used to hate this dude. I, I used to think that Ooze Priest was a joke. Right? I, we had the experience where this guy is a dwarf, so he doesn't do anything, and he only has healing but i'm getting clobbered from all sides and i have these kind of mad attacks like able bash what does that do and then all right i'm gonna move in and attack finally and then i drew cowardly off of like my altruism proc for something else what is happening here it's just a complete disaster i've been there i've been there and i understand and then you know because i kept playing caverns I kept running into this dude, and suddenly it was just like, ah, life is good. I can't die with this dude around. It feels like you're gonna die, and then somehow, 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 everything comes together. From the consecrated ground, consecrated ground, that blessed train, that little bit of heal, and the extra card, infinite like altruism triggers, potentially there's so many ways to trigger altruism. Um, super tanky, boosted heal, the bash at, you know, depending on the melee unit at the right time, like, push them back out of range so they can't hurt you, um, boosted heal is a great heal, he has healing rays, he has lasers block, I think he even has defenders block, he has defenders block, he has wings of faith, if, if like, people are, are caught in a weird situation, you give them wings of faith and now they're out, he has a random rocket charge, he has a sprint to go places, I think he's healing blessing. He's so many heals. Super defensive, which which can hurt. There are times when you do want to smack people. I understand that, and the low density attacks is potentially very frustrating. Um, but I think if you hang in there and move well, like he 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 pays off. There there are times when the enemy just can't can't meaningfully hurt you at all because he's on your team there are times when the healing and the stuff is just enough to get you out of a really bad really tight situation um i've i've won way more games with this i've won games i thought i would not have won otherwise without him like i, I think these two are s tier because they will get you out of the most hairy situations <laughs> between them um and it's funny because like like you play with the ooze, you you don't feel like he has you feel like his his um draw can be really clunky, but like man, I don't know. It's 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 overall overall I I I I, I think it's really good. Like he doesn't have like vulnerable, which which will randomly get you killed, like from with uh the human priest down here. Sure not as offensive, but like the the elf priest isn't as reliant on other people. I don't know. I, I think I think the Uz priest is phenomenal, and he's gonna get an S here from me. Oh no! There's one more priest. There's one more priest. The space dwarf priest, who looks like a wizard. Where does this priest 
go, I think he's very comfortably A plus. A or A plus. Okay. Okay. So this the space priest is radiation based. This this priest is very aggressive. Um the radiation is very fun and can be a lot of AoE damage and the handicaps can sometimes be can really help you. Right? Like imagine if if it randomly plops superstitious onto an onto an enemy. Amazing. <laughs> a lot of potential upside. And again, if there's if a weird thing happens like fast stream guts, hopefully you can ignore it, stuff like that. Um this fellow's you know tier depends a lot on his team composition. I think he's realistically around like here-ish. Probably around here. I'll make some room. Um, eh. So if your teammates want support, he is like A A minus. Um, if your teammates don't want support, A plus. Uh, this priest is very self-sufficient, very damaging, not so much, not great at helping the team out. Um, it's got a lot of great attacks, again the radiation, like not just the radiation, which is really just kind of funny and stuff, but um, he's got good attacks, he's got three invigorating touches, he has I think a, a powerful, two powerful bashes, push the button to get a random laser attack, and those are generally pretty darn awesome as well. Um, dude's got good damage, and he's he's very tanky. He's got good armors, two hardy mail, thick hide armor, toughness, nice. And he's got some ways to move around, jump back, healing dash, flame. Like again, he he's more he's more like a warrior, honestly. Very aggressive, very self sufficient. Not really there to help the team. You can sort of deal with some uh, some attachments with destructive purge, but he he's there he's there to smash the enemy. This priest, space priest, is best when he doesn't have to care about his teammates. <laughs> what a guy! All right, so for elf warriors, we're gonna go from the weakest elf warrior to the strongest. The cave elf warrior is somehow the weakest one. I'm just starting with this one. This elf warrior. Why, why? Okay, so why are the elf warriors so good? They all are. They are all highly consistent. They are just damage pooping machines. All of them. They're ready to do the warrior job of big numbers all the time. Um, I think this one isn't as damaging as the other ones, but it does have a very cool self synergy with elvish insight into devastating blow, which this one has. A lot of. So okay, so all the elf warriors have very high damage output. So what's special about this one? So Elvish, Elvish Insight plus Devastating Blow is really fun, not only for the big damage, but also for the information it gives you, which can be really helpful, right? Like, um, say you're planning, say your wizards, or love terrain based wizards, having Elvish Insight, now you know if an enemy has a move left or not for your terrain, right? Fantastic. Pairs it very well in those situations. He also has a nice little team walk, which can be really helpful as well, especially if you're paired with a wizard. I think this one pairs very well with wizards. Um, bashers as well, you know, keeps people at bay, surprisingly tanky with the with two reliable males, and has three auto blocks. Auto blocks. Which, if it's relevant, can be insane value. Like if you're going against the chess pieces, for example ins can be insane value. So very cool. But again, um, not as much damage as the other elf warriors. And you know, auto block still a fine block on its own. Um, I'm, I'm just looking. It's like wow. Like what's a, what's a bad draw for this dude? Skip and flight aura. Like that's that's everything else is, is great. <laughs> everything else is fantastic. Like, even has a few random stabs. Or has a Sundering Strike, Fiery Stab, what a, what a nice random set of cards. Super solid. Okay, so what's what's a better Elf Warrior than this fellow? 
the space elf warrior. She's better. And why is she better? More consistently high damage. Um, so notably, her damage, she has a couple powerful hacks and fainting strikes. Um, remember what I said about Space Warrior's tricky stabs being a really nice option to deal with people you don't want to block your attacks? She's got three fainting strikes, more damage, and higher density of those of that kind of attacks too. Like nine damage on its own is nothing to sneeze at, hard to block, can be a very nice bonus. What else is cool about her? Also very surprisingly tanky between um, dynamic armor and two defenders blocks. Two defenders blocks. So good, right? Um, one of the best blocks to have in PvP. It's good. It's going to be great in PvP, PvE as well. Blocking attack while getting yourself a card, being able to protect other folks. Fantastic. Fantastic. So okay, the Elf Warriors, while they do have a lot of big damage, this does not mean you recklessly charge forward, um, right? Just because you can take out like one or two enemies this turn, there's still, you know, like six more enemies. So you still have to position your, your Elf Warriors very carefully, but just really nice that if things get weird, if, or if suddenly, if suddenly enemies come to you or whatever, like that you can deal with them very promptly and you know, minimize damage and be prepared for whatever comes next. And so, strongest elf warrior, the big boss elf warrior, the Tesco elf warrior, and this fellow is, in my opinion, S tier. So not only does this person probably have the most damage, she's got like powerful bludgeons and mighty bludgeons and barge and crusher, but has, but can actually take good advantage of elven maneuvers from all the thick hide armors they have. This fellow is not only incredibly, does have a lot of high damage, but is also surprisingly tanky, right? Um, from the armors. This elf, this elf is tankier than this dwarf. I mean, kind of by definition, just based on, you know, the amount of armor cards they have in their class, but thick hide armor, four thick hide armors. These are fetchable from elven maneuvers. Provide good armors, and you can use it to move out of the way if things get weird. It has three vicious thrusts, two pulverizing bludgeons, a surging shield block, which, by the way, can be drawn off of elven maneuvers. Perry, what is this person not shimmering aura randomly? What does this person not have? Two lunging thrusts, so you can get it lunging. It's got step attacks to go places. This warrior is incredible. This for like. For like the self-sufficient warrior that will do everything you want it to do, this fellow, this fellow is it. If you want an elf warrior that's a bit more of a team player, like you know, defender's block, the team moves, there's some other options, but in terms of just self-sufficient, consistent, guaranteed awesome, this elf warrior is the way to go. I think this elf warrior, ooh, who's better between this elf warrior and, this elf and the human war warrior? I was gonna say, I was leading this one, but like, you can't really go wrong with six impaling stabs, so it's it's really hard to say. Um, I, I think the human needs a little bit more support than the elf warrior, I, so I, I'm gonna say that this elf warrior is the best one. Best warrior in caverns. We did it. We did it. We did it. Wow. Cool. Okay. So with that, all that's left are wizards. We're talking about the strong folks, let's talk about one of the strongest ones. It's gonna be the Acid Geisha, who is right on the border between S and A+. Part of the reason wizards are last, mostly, you know, just how I rambled, but it's convenient because the wizards probably vary the most in how effective they are. We've hinted a little bit before with how some wizards are very reliant on terrain. So the Acid Geisha kind of like the vampire, in the right circumstances, is undoubtedly S tier. You know, just for the fun of having two in each, I'm gonna, I'll put her up here. Because she is very strong. Um, she excels the most in some combination of large maps and or places where there are choke points where you can really, like, if you can slow the enemy down, if you're on a map where you can slow down and cut off a bunch of enemies at once, 
Um, she is like one of the best characters you can have on there. Between Flash Flood, Acid Pool, and then even Acid Jet, you can just you can slow down the enemies so much that it gives you time to deal with whoever's in front of you. Right? You, you can sort of split the enemies into waves. You deal with one wave, then the other one is here and has probably been injured a bit from the acid, right? And then you take care of them, and then the last wave comes, you deal with them, and then and then and then life is good. Um and she's actually has is surprisingly has really good defensive options too. She has force field. She has resistant hide, which can just be a free win against some of the ranged units, which are the most problematic enemies in caverns. Right? Um the pygmies, for example, with their poison, if she has res hide, doesn't matter. Because <laughs> res hide gives immunity to poison. Um Acid Pool is bananas. Dastardly Curse is a fantastic trick to have to turn enemies into non-threats. She has Jump Soldier. She has a couple of blocks. Force can even. Um, so surprisingly good defense and is able to just exert an incredible amount of influence and control on the board. Not sort of the, the more like control that we're used to thinking of, of like Telekinesis, Disgust of War, Winds of War, but dramatically slowing down enemy movement can be a huge lifesaver. And then if you happen to get un like Unholy Wellspring with Acid Jet, yeah. So her, her, her most obvious downside is that it's like not impressive immediate damage. Um, right, sometimes you really need to kill an enemy right now and she doesn't quite get there. Flash of Agony and, and uh, Acid Jet, like sort of, but like Flash of Agony has its issues, you're hurting your teammates, you don't always want to do that. Um, Acid Jet's only 3 damage, only 5 range, eh. But then it's like, okay, wizards. They can't do too much damage because their whole thing is range, and range is like really nice, right? So like on smaller maps, when they're sort of all up in, when the enemies are up in your face already, she's not as good. But on maps that she excels at, and the team composition she, she excels at, absolutely phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. Okay, next. Got to finish off the human warriors with Caveman, who is very comfortably in. He's somewhere. He's between like A plus and A, so I think this is a good spot for him. Um. I'm a fan of this dude. I wasn't at first. Kind of like the Ooze Priest, I was not a fan of this dude at first. He's just like. Straws felt clumsy. Like, what was he doing? What are, what are these cards? Do they matter? Like, forgetfulness. What the heck? But. Um, you know, it's how how well do you can you use the stuff? And honestly, he has he has a lot of everything of what you need. He has a lot of nice random stuff that will every now and then be exactly what you need, which is pretty fun. Um, like he's the only person with the illusory barrier that can really that can save your ass. He's got I think he has a parry. He has a Nimble Strike, he has a random Obliterating Spark. Surging Blast is really cool. Uh, Big Zap is solid damage for a for a warrior, or for a wizard, and enemies are gonna be coming to you. He's got armor. He's got a lot of armor. He's two reliable males, a res hide, a mimetic armor. Does he have force field or no? No force field. No force field. But he does have parry. He's got armor hate. He has short perplexing ray, which is surprisingly awesome kind of at the time the, the time on that can be weird but as a way to you know potentially snipe out an annoying card or just if an enemy has one or two cards you get rid of that last card in their hand and then moves you away so he's like he's surprisingly tanky which is really cool right he can get in the way and then with stuff like short perplexing ray surging bolt surging blast force cannon he can sort of reshuffle himself into safety the enemies do come to him, and he has the armor, and he's reliable mail, like, awesome. Reliable mail, super, super good. It does feel like a weird mix of cards. I I can I cannot I cannot deny that. <laughs> but based on what he gives you, uh you're you can make fun stuff happen with him. You can make fun stuff happen with him. And isn't this cool that all the characters, right? A is average, and I'm. How many of these have I said that they're strong? The characters 
in caverns. They're they're obviously not going to be PvP quality PvP tier. Obviously not. But I think more often than not, you go into a map, and you're gonna you're gonna feel good about your odds. You don't want to see these people, but <laughs> and again, the uh, the human priest and elf wizard down here, they're in B tier. Um, but even then, you you can make it work. You can make things work. The next two wizards I'm talking about, unlike the caveman who's unfocused, these two wizards are very focused. And this person's gonna fit into A tier somewhere as well. This spell, this spell depends a lot. Um, this spell is the dwarf burn wizard. More like a dwarf lava wizard. He has a lot of... He's got volcanoes and wall fire and other stuff. So if there's an urgent threat you need to deal with right now, not gonna be very good. How useful, how like immediately and obviously strong he is, is gonna be related to if he can get a volcano off and on how many people. And so that one elf warrior who has the, uh, the elfish insight or the Midternacht elf wizard with inquisition bolt, but preferably with elfish insight, if you can see all the enemies, if you can stall and get the volcano off, he can make your life so much easier because eight damage from the lava is tremendous. And he's got wall of fire and some control spells to back it up too. Um, He's not really about the burning, it's really about the lava with this dude. So if you can make the lava work, he's gonna be awesome, but otherwise, it's kinda eh? Um, it really hinge, it hinges so much on whether or not you can make the lava work, so he's, he's gonna be lower, lower A tier. Um, at the very least, he's consistent and thematic, and, and you, you, you understand and know, you know what you're gonna get with him. That can be really nice. Uh, now you just need to make it work. The last dwarf wizard is the cold Vulcan, cold based Vulcan wizard. Um, she's better. I think she's better than the dwarf Sparky wizard. I think her being better than the caveman makes sense as well. Nice. What's what's great about this wizard? Very tanky. She's got two toughnesses. Adaptable which can single-handedly tank things forever on the right circumstances. And then she has teleport self to help her get out of weird spots. Like if she, if she is doing her tanking job and then gets surrounded or something, she can then teleport out to safety and do cool things. In the meantime, the cold base stuff, depending on how you use it, right? Like, so she has a really good mix of both frost jolt, cold snap, and ice bolts. So ice bolts, Fantastic way to slow down a couple of enemies. Frost Jolt slows down another enemy, and depending on stuff, you can then use it to focus down an enemy because it's got good damage from it. Blizzard Breath is freaking hilarious. <laughs> she even has Freeze, wow. So this wizard, very consistent. You know what you're gonna get. You're gonna get some cool, cold stuff. Cool, cold. Huh? There are times where you're gonna need to focus on damage off of it, and there are times where you're gonna need to focus on control on slowing down enemies to help your team. So it's up to you to navigate that issue, but she's got all the tools you need and every now and then can just tank things forever between adaptable and toughness and dwarf HP it can be really nice. Right, that's the other nice thing. With with the cold stuff, you slow it down so that damage comes in at a manageable rate. And because they can't move as far, it's, it's also easier for you to like, like if someone's at the front and is taking a lot of damage, it's easier for you to retreat them back and move someone forward and sort of maintain your relative position. Because if the enemies are slowed, it's harder for them to sort of, right, when you move back, the enemy gets a turn and that's their opportunity to jump on you. And then you're sort of slowly moving back, right? Um, which is a fine movement pattern caverns. But if you need to hold your hold your spot, then the cold comes in really handy. Of, okay, move someone back, they can't move as far. Have someone else take her place, take the place in front, potentially her, because she can tank, right? Dwarf HP and toughness. Very consistent. Again, since it's lower-ish damage, and you might you might you're going to be tempted to spread out the damage to slow down multiple enemies. Um, having backup goes 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 well with the warrior. Bam. Preferably one with S tier ones. <laughs> so yeah, that's the funny thing in terms of like pairings, right? Like it can be hard because I'm just trying to think of like what does the person want? Oh, this person wants this type of thing. That can be fulfilled. Oh, that, but that this type of thing can be fulfilled by like you know five different characters. So, uh. all right, 
Three more characters, three elf wizards, let's go. We have this elf wizard. This is the sparky based elf wizard. She's like the dwarf spark wizard, but I think a little bit more self-sufficient, a little bit more damage oriented, a little bit more fragile. Right, a little bit more fragile, but also way more mobile, um, which can be good or bad. I think she's a less consistent as well, which is why I have her in B tier, but very comfortable being B tier. Again, B is just bland, not bad, bland. Kind of straightforward, not the most exciting. Um, she can be very exciting when she's got the like the spark conductor, spark conductor, and arcane aura. And suddenly, you know, she's throwing out 9, 10 damage plus damage mighty sparks, and like, oh my god, where'd that come from? Oh, she has a potent spark. That's amazing. She's got arcane spark. So again, when things come together, can be pretty darn nice. But in the meantime, you do have to be careful. Um she's an elf HP. The bad map, you know, on smaller maps when she can't move as much, can be tough. So you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to, gonna have to be careful. You're gonna have to be careful with her, right? It, it's right, right. The characters in in in, in the bland here, they're typically just gonna be a bit harder to work with, um, for various reasons. Either hard to work with or just lower quality stuff. And depending on the map, managing her HP can be an issue. Managing her clunky draws can be an issue as well. But when things come together, she can do a lot of damage. It can be pretty darn nice to have. Yeah, having AoE between the Arcing Spark and the Potent Spark, that feels that feels pretty darn good. Now let's talk about the fun fun burn wizard. Who the reason he's down here is mostly just a consistency issue. He is very consistent. Like we we all remember the times when the dude gets fire starter into like fireball catching like four enemies. Yes. But how about all the times he just draws magma sprays? Or like instant burn, or like you have an instant burn hand, you're waiting for next round for a burn card, and then you draw reliable hide armor into instant burn. How does that make you feel? I know how it makes me feel. <laughs> it makes me sad. <laughs> Cause that's happened so many times just like, no! Fireball! Fireball, please. He only has two fireballs. You can't count on fireball. You can hope for fireball, but you can't count on it. Um, so it's essentially a consistency issue. And um, again, this is more like actual burn wizard. The dwarf fire one is lava. This one's burn. This one wants to hit people with various spells and then finish them off with like instant burn. Right, like fireball, fire starter, instant burn. That's the way to go. Um, so. Unfortunately, the dude's main way to to set people on fire is magma spray. Which means you're going to have to be careful, and you're going to have to be careful. You're going to be careful. Don't get greedy. Try and catch, you know, two, three people with magma spray as safely as possible. Now, it is pretty cool. He has both quick run, a couple quick runs, and four wind spores to make things happen, to move people around and stuff. Right, and a lot of these characters, they're, they're designed to have the tools you need to win more or less any given level. It, it's usually a combination of maps and or enemies. Um, that are why you lose in caverns, not the characters. Not the characters. Characters are all fine. And yeah, the, the, the Burning Elf Wizard is just a little too inconsistent. And, and you still gotta manage the Elf, the elf Wizard HP and whatnot. The Winds of War are really handy. It can, again, can help set you up for good magma sprays and stuff, but... Ugh. They're hard to use, man. What can I say? They're hard to use. Final character we're going to talk about, Space Elf Wizard, who occupies a similar niche down here. This one, this dude, also a lot harder to use than most of them, so I think this is actually a fair spot for him. I, I did not have the best first impression of him, but as I played with them, I've... It's like, oh, okay, he's... He's also got. He's also better than I thought he was, but um, he does still have notable handicaps. Again, he's very terrain oriented, which means he needs time to set up, and he can't always deal with an immediate in-your-face problem. What is cool about him is he is surprisingly mobile. He has teleport self, telepod jaunt, a nice healing dash, which works well with the teleport self, which you often keep just to be able to emergency get the heck out of there because he's an elf wizard, right? 
Um, so hold, holding on to your move cards generally, it's good in PvP, it's good in caverns. Uh, move cards are good. So this dude is very terrain based, laser beacons, some flash floods, and occasional stone pillars as well. So he's an, it's an interesting dude. There's definitely stuff he can do, but it's just not always enough. So the dude thrives if you can get multiple laser beacons, each one hitting like three, two, three enemies at least. And when that happens and they don't have armor, it's amazing. Um, without it, it can be awkward and you're sort of hoping for other terrain stuff to happen, force blasts to move people around. A couple punishing bolts and a couple opponent sparks, so nice damage there. But and some surging blasts too. But it, it's really about how well can you use how well can you use the terrain on the map you're given. Yeah, that can be tough to deal with, right? Like, like the dude has potential, but so much of it is based on on what you're fighting against and what map you're on. That it, it's right he, he's not reliable right the people up here are all consistent and reliable and this dude i mean he's consistent he knows what he's about he's going to poop out terrain everywhere but how useful is that terrain uh, that's up to you to make it work it also pairs well with uh, the cold wizards actually the this this dude because if the enemies can't move as far if the enemies are slowed down by the encumber, that means they can't move as far, which means they're going to clump up. And them clumping up is perfect for the laser beacons. And the other cool thing about the laser beacon is that since it hits into AoE, um, right, often the AI, if they're on terrain, they're likely to move off. So you can put the terrain, the laser beacon on an empty space, and then the AI is like, oh, there's nothing here, I, I probably won't get hurt. And then, and, you know, then you can pass, they can pass, and then it hits all the people around it. So that's actually a pretty nice, that's pretty, a pretty neat perk of the laser beacons. But again, density is very relevant, and if the enemy has armors, that could produce the effectiveness of the beacons a lot too. So he's got a lot of, there's a lot of, it's an uphill battle for this dude. Not necessarily weak, just bland, just a little bit mehr than the average cool dudes up here. And okay, this is my Caverns of Chaos tier list. Um, the the update made some changes. One, I don't know what all the changes are. Two, I think they're all very minor. So it's not, I don't think the updates will dramatically change this. It, it, it bumped this dude from C to B. <laughs> that's, that's the only noticeable change, I think. Um, But otherwise, this, yeah, this feels good. This feels good. Would love to hear people's thoughts on this. Yeah, I, I don't think this is necessarily gonna help you um, like beat caverns, because again, there's just so much, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of random craziness going on. But I do think that like these, like you know, 10, 11 characters up at the top here will dramatically improve your chances. As it goes down, then it's it's really up to you to bring out these characters' potential, right? And then hope that the maps and enemies don't don't screw you too much in the meantime. But I think that is all I've got for now. If people are curious about like specific pairings, I can. If people want that, I would do I would do another video for that for sure. Um, but for now, I hope that was fun. Would love to hear people's thoughts, and I guess I lied about my next video being a, a ranked PvP video, but I think maybe I my next one really will be a PvP video. So until then, take care, and I will see y'all next time.